mess, this mess. <laughs> is it in focus? Do I even want it to be in focus? I'm not entirely sure, but hello. Thank you for clicking on this video. Yes, this is my Oncidium Twinkle Red Fantasy. What's left of it and what's possibly going to be the future of it. It's been a while since I've featured anything Twinkle for reasons, as you can clearly see. I used to have three. I lost two. <laughs> and yeah, I also figured out why I lost the other two. I've got my Lekka and self-watering ratio completely wrong. I've got large Lekka in this pot. I would never ever do that again if I were to be able to save this Twinkle. Then on the repot, should that ever be the case, I'm going to be using very, very small Lekka instead. Anyhow, I thought this was a great little pot full of things happening, not only just to update you, but to show you what is going on with my little twinkle. And if it is going to be rescued, then I would like to show it now so that we can see how it managed to get through the winter. And if it is not going to be rescued based on the circumstances in the winter, well, we've had a look at it. <laughs> Let's just say it like that. And I don't have to do much talking should it eventually feature in one of the going, going, gone videos. Would you be saving this twinkle? Would you even waste your time on it? You're probably thinking, yikes, that would have been in my bin a long time ago. Well, let me tell you something. I fully agree with you. And if I hadn't been filming, if I didn't have a channel, yeah, I would probably have said my twinkle is history, so let's just be done with it. However, I do have a channel and I've never actually successfully saved a twinkle by putting it into an ICU setup. The moment I touch a twinkle and put it into ICU setup, it fails even faster than what I've done this time. And if you find yourself in a similar situation when it comes to trying to revive a small kind of Oncidium hybrid, you put it into ICU and uh, <clears throat> it just collapses on you, well, you're not on your own. And maybe what I'm going to talk about and show you what I did and why I did it in this video, maybe that'll help you in the future as well. The setup is not relevant here. This has nothing to do with the fact it's Lekka and self-watering and you are growing in organic media. Nothing to do with it. But what I have found is the moment you unpot a weak, sick, struggling Oncidium of medium to small size and then you put it into ICU with lots of humidity and all that good stuff that normally should help, that Oncidium is going to go. And I did not repeat that with this Oncidium simply because I thought if you're going to go, you're going to go while still in the pot. I'm not going to do the same thing over and over again, having lost my other twinkles despite intensive care. So here we are, struggling on Sidium in a pot. And the first thing that jumps into your head is this conglomeration of muck and desiccated pseudobulbs. Now, you would say, was that rot? It is possible that part of it was rot, but part of it is also old age. And I never took them off. I thought, do what you have to do for as long as you have to do it. And we'll take it step by step from there. So that was easy. I do have my snips in my other hand, but I don't need them. So let's eliminate that pseudobulb. You're welcome, King. Here comes another one. There's also been some rot on this one. So goodbye. Let's get rid of that. Here's another one. There's been some rot on this one. Now, the fact I keep repeating there's been rot, there's been rot, there's been rot is to show you that while it's been rotting away in the pot, you can still see that there is some green. So I'm just going to eliminate anything and everything that doesn't look really, really nice. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to have anything left of this pot once I've done that. But in order to show you what else is going on, sorry, that was Siliano. I want to get rid of this nasty stuff. Also, because we are heading into winter, obviously, and I don't need anything around the base of a twinkle that's going to perpetuate itself and cause further issues. Especially, as you can see, I am now kind of touching a structure and area that is looking pretty green. So let me just continue cleaning this up. Thank you, Siliano, for that interruption. Probably expressing his disgust at what he's seeing here. Can I just pull this? You see, I don't want to be aggressive with this because I don't want to pull what's good and growing out of the pot. 
So we're going to be systematic about it and relatively careful. Not all these pseudobulbs succumb to rot. The duration of having left them in the pot, that also exacerbated some rot, but some of them just desiccated because that's what Oncidium twinkle pseudobulbs do. They will desiccate. Let's get some of this out. There we go. <laughs> it's like digging into a treasure trove. Now, we still have something over here. We'll get rid of that as well. Anything and everything that could pose a threat when it gets a little bit wet and cold. There is no odor coming from this pot. No decay odor, nothing that smells like where you're going, oh, ho, ho, you know, you put that stinky face on. There is none of that, which is great. If there was any kind of decay odor coming through, I would be a very, very concerned. But in this case, nope. It's just old matter that needs to come off. And now we have ourselves some greenery. That already looks so much better, doesn't it? Now, let me explain what's going on here. And everybody with a very keen eye can actually see spikes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I will not let this orchid bloom out. The spikes are going to stay on this orchid until I see buds separating from the stem, at which point I'm going to be cutting them off because by that time, the hormones within the orchid will have progressed to such a degree they have mobilized elsewhere, having done their job, thinking the orchid is going to bloom, meaning that if I cut these spikes off right now, the orchid is going to try and push more energy into producing another spike or two, which is far too energy consuming and I don't want her to do that. At this stage, the hormones for growing spikes are still relatively concentrated and fresh. So keeping that in mind, I'm leaving the spikes on until the buds separate themselves from the spike itself. Twinkles, of course, take forever to develop their spikes, so that is a little concerning for me, but it is better to leave them on at this stage and then observe and watch and see what happens as opposed to cutting them prematurely and she's going to try and spike again. So, with that out of the way, what's going on here? Okay, in my climate, twinkles don't have enough humidity around their delicate structures and I will always get leaf tip dieback. Always, even while she was healthy and doing well, I had leaf tip dieback. I do not cut them off because I am not going to create another wound that then is at the tip of the leaf, which will then be the source of more leaf tip dieback. So whatever she does and however she absorbs this leaf whenever she's ready to do so, I leave that up to the orchid. I don't interfere in that way. You can see here, I did cut a leaf tip back once and it's already starting to degrade. Granted, it's on an older pseudobulb, so that has a weighing factor as well. But you know, if you've got leaves like this and then they keep degrading, degrading, you may be getting rid of green tissue just a little bit too soon. I let my orchids do their thing. One thing though, this leaf tip dieback right here is not because of environmental issues. This is because of pest control. Because this orchid was living close to my worst shelf ever, and I had thrips and mites and all that going on all in one go, I obviously treated this orchid with insecticidal soap as well, because while she is somewhat progressing and coming somewhat back to life, a pest attack would take her out completely, then all of this was for naught. So the difference between seeing what is going on because of an insecticidal treatment here, and as opposed to this leaf here, this is dry. This here is still feeling like the same texture as the fresh leaf is feeling. Nothing's really changed. It is not wet. But the reason this has happened is because of the time of day that I used my insecticidal soap, being radical, trying to get at the situation before it even compounds itself, I sprayed this orchid during the day when oncidiums have their stomata open and I was very, very liberal, meaning that the orchid absorbed the insecticidal soap through the leaves 
which normally wouldn't pose any damage. However, she's a small one, she's a weak one, and there was probably not enough airflow at the time that I did the treatment, and for that reason, we have some insecticidal soap absorption here, which negatively affected these leaves. And I'm not going to cut them off. I'm just watching and letting her do her thing. This here is a similar situation. You can see how the leaf is a little bit, well, it looks like it's wet over here, but it's not. It's just that the tissue and the cells sort of have kind of merged together and died because of the insecticidal soap. This is totally different. This is environmental. But having left this orchid in her pot as opposed to putting her into ICU has been the difference between losing my twinkle as opposed to what you see now. I have plenty of little new growths coming. There we go. That's a nice looking one right there. And I have another one right back in here. There's a lot of little potential happening in the pot, which I'm going to be focusing on. This one was a new growth at the time and it looked lovely jubbly until I interfered. But you can see that there was a problem with roots because here we have the classic signs of the concertina, the crinkly leaves, and that is because of a lack of hydration. So all these factors are happening all in one pot. And I thought, you know, if you don't make it through to spring, at least we've had a look at how many symptoms can be in one pot. And I want to get that leaf out and it is not crispy, it is not rotting and that's why I couldn't just pull it out with my tweezers. This is another one affected by insecticidal soap. It has a completely different characteristic and appearance to it than a leaf tip dieback. Again here, insecticidal soap. Yeah, so you can see I went pretty much gung-ho but <laughs> apart from having some leaves go really, really off, I have a twinkle still in the pot and it is possible that come next year, I will have a stronger twinkle in the pot. We will know more in May of 2023, but I can only advise from having done this and the experience I've gotten out of this venture is to leave your medium and small size oncidium that is weak in the pot and treat it as if nothing is wrong, so to speak. Keep an eye on it. And as you can see, even the pseudobulbs that desiccated and then started to rot out in the pot, they weren't affecting the rest of the orchid's performance at all. I mean, goodness me, I'm going through with all the little growths here. Check this one right here. Now that is a normal Oncidium twinkle size growth right there. I am not concerned about all the dead roots and all the matter that is in here. You can see that desiccation slash rot is starting here, but that is also discoloration from the mass that's in here. I am not going to be chopping away any of this. There's plenty of airflow around every single growth now that we have gotten rid of what could pose a problem when it comes to being cold and wet. I will continue with the light levels that she has, which is sort of bright shade as long as I've got sunshine. I am not using artificial lights to recover this orchid and my fertilizing is very, very minimal at 100 parts per million. I treat her as I would my tolumnia when it comes to fertilizing quantity. I have given her calcium nitrate leading up to the winter, also at 100 parts per million. And I'm now focusing more on calcium and magnesium just so that she gets the magnesium into the leaves so that she can photosynthesize whatever light levels as the weather progresses or declines. That is my treatment plan from here on in all the way through to April. Only when the temperatures rise will I be adding seaweed again. I don't want to perpetuate any energy that she needs to stay alive by pumping in additional hormones. The seaweed stopped back in September. It takes approximately four to six weeks for seaweed to stop its hormone boosting effectiveness. But you can see that besides looking a little bit sad, the leaves that are not affected by anything else I just described are looking really, really twinkle-like. <laughs> anyway, I hope that if you find yourself in a similar situation, that you don't panic, leave your orchid in the pot. Anything you do to try and get a medium to small size Oncidium into an ICU situation takes an orchid out faster, is much more stressful than just leaving her in the pot. Because unfortunately, usually when it comes to these twinkles, once they go downhill, 
they go downhill very, very fast, and that includes pest attacks. This one started its decline because of a massive scale infestation, and I had a really tough time, even with my paint job, to counteract the scale and get rid of it because of the nooks and crannies. Last year's spikes were loaded with scale, so this orchid lost its blooms very, very quickly. I cut the spikes off to remove the immediate threat, and then it was hustle, hustle, painting the structures to make sure that no crawlers gained any foothold into this orchid any further. So take it easy on your medium to small size oncidiums. And I'm sorry if they're about to go, they're going to go in the pot. It might take a little bit longer, but you stand a better chance keeping it in the pot than moving it into an ICU setup where uh, it gets harder and harder to keep them alive. I don't know if this was helpful. I hope somebody found it helpful, but I do appreciate that you watched anyway and well less this mess and we'll see what happens in may because if you do not see this orchid or an update from it before then that means my twinkle is still around and there's nothing to see here <laughs> have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though please that you stay safe take care bye